guys. Bienvenidos a mi canal. My name is Eileen Moreno and I'm a fashion design student at Dominican University. I will be graduating by the end of the semester. I'm so excited. It's very unbelievable. But we finally did it. I just have to finish the internship and we're set to go. Today I will show you guys how to sew on a portable sewing machine. If you guys didn't know, there's different types of sewing machines such as a blind stitch, cover stitch machine, serger machine, industrial machine. There's just a lot of machines. My goal is to show you guys different types of finishings, the simple way of just connecting two fabrics together, ways for you guys to practice, and what kind of tools I use while I'm sewing. I thought of this video because in the near future I will be showing you guys my fashion designs and how to do fit and alterations to your clothing. And since I'm gonna do those videos, I kind of want to just have a video where I can just refer you guys to it so you guys can have an idea of how to sew. We're gonna sew together. We're gonna be sewing buddies. I hope this is very useful for you guys. So here we go. Alrighty, so my portable sewing machine is by Singer and it's the model 2732. I'll start off with the functions of the machine. So here, this is the on and off button. This input is to connect this cord, which is wired to the foot pedal and the electric plug. This is how the foot pedal looks like, and this is what's used to accelerate the sewing needle. You simply connect the cord to the input, and then place the foot pedal on the floor, and then take the plug and obviously connect it to a port of electricity. All right, back to the functions of the sewing machine. Okay, so this is the hand wheel. Whenever you spin it towards you or backwards, um, basically the sewing needle goes up and down, and that's how you make stitches manually. For this machine, to activate the bobbin winder, you will have to press this button to do so and you can undo it by pressing it from the top. This is called the spool holder and it literally holds your spool of thread, which you place it in while the thread goes under the spool. Once you take off the spool stopper, you put it back in place to stop the spool from running out of the spool holder. This is the bobbin winder and you can switch it like this to go on and off. This is to hold the thread while you are threading your sewing machine which then goes through this and then all the way through and yeah. This is where you hold the whole sewing machine so that's what makes it portable, you can take it anywhere. Here if you flip it up, here is some ring changers where you can change the way it stitches. So this is like the little plastic thing and you see how it tells you one, two, three, there's two, three different plastic rings that you can put it in there. A lot of the newer sewing machines don't require to do all that because they are already installed into the sewing machine. All right, so this section lets you select if you want a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, and you can put it on any of the settings, but we're gonna use the straight stitch. This section, you can select the direction of the sewing needle. So if you slide it all the way to the left, it'll go all the way to the left. If you put it in the middle, then the needle will go to the middle. And then if you go it to the right, it will move to the right. For right now, we're gonna leave it in the middle. All right, and then this section, you can select different type of stitches by changing first the different type of plastic rings that comes with the sewing machine. Um, yours probably doesn't have this. It'll probably just be already installed in the machine. And you simply take out whatever you have in there and then place the other one. Uh, as you can tell, that one was really old. <laughs> I had number one in there, so I'm gonna take the one that I pl placed in there and keep it the way it was. These letters correspond to the different type of stitchings, as you can see here. All you have to do is slide the slider to what letter you want, but for this occasion, we're gonna leave it at A. And this is the stitch width, which you can change it when you're doing the zigzag stitches. It really won't do anything when you're doing a straight stitch, so don't worry about it right now. This is the stitch length selector, which if you put it at one, that means that the length of the stitches are very close. And then if you put it to five, it'll be the longest. 
I usually put it at three to four. I use five whenever I wanna do a gathering or something like that. This is the back stitch button, which is very important. Whenever you start a stitch, you do a back stitch, and then whenever you end a stitch, you end it with a back stitch. And you do this to secure the stitch and so nothing unravels. On the other side of the dial, you'll see these little rectangles with numbers. Basically, these are the steps to doing a buttonhole. You first put it at one, then you put it on two, and then you put it at three, and then four to complete the whole buttonhole. You'll notice that the sliders move, and that corresponds to what step you're doing for the buttonhole. This is a tension dial. I usually keep it at four whenever I'm just using regular fabric. Behind the sewing needle, you'll see the presser foot lever, and this lifts up the presser foot. Behind the sewing machine, there's this little compartment where you'll see the needles, the foots, uh, different type of gadgets for the sewing machine. Different kind of fabrics need different kind of needles. Heavy weight fabrics would use 100 over 16, medium weight would be 90 over 14, and light weight would be 70 over 10. And this compartment can be easily removed. Now you can sew anything that's circular and put it through here, such as a hem of a sleeve or a hem of a jean. If you ever have to remove the needle, you just unscrew the screw and then take out the needle. If you need to replace it or anything, you just put it back in there um, and then you just screw it back on very tightly. If you ever have to change the foot presser, all you have to do is unscrew it and then replace it with the new one. And make sure whenever you're putting it back, screw it very tightly. In many sewing machines, there's like a little razor in the back where you can cut your thread. Like that. All right, now I'm going to show you how to thread a sewing machine. First, you will grab your selected thread spool and make sure the thread is pulled from under, not over. And then from the center hole, you will insert it through the spool holder. After you insert it, place the spool stopper after inserting the thread spool. Now we're gonna take the thread and put it through these holes just like this. We're gonna like kind of wrap it around and it's gonna be a card. And now we're gonna wrap this thread around this little I don't know what you call it, but it's circular. What you wanna do is kinda of pull it from under and then wrap it once. Before we thread the machine, we will wind the thread on the clear bobbin. Take the thread and put it through the hole that's on top of the bobbin. Then wrap the thread a couple of times. So it will look something like this. Now take your bobbin and insert it in the bobbin winder and then push it towards the bobbin stopper. Push inwards on the center of the hand wheel. At the beginning, hold the thread and press the foot pedal. Once it catches the thread, let it go and let it spin until the bobbin gets filled. Once it's done, pull it out the bobbin winder and cut the thread. Now that we've completed winding the bobbin, we can complete threading the sewing machine. Pull the thread through this little loop, then wrap it in the first slit, Pull it up towards the second slit and wrap it in the top hook. Pull the thread downwards, wrap it twice in this coil, and then wrap it once in the second loop above the sewing needle. Take the tip of the thread and push it through the small needle hole. In this clear slide, there's a bobbin case. We will insert our filled bobbin in there by having the thread facing the left. It kind of looks like a letter P. Push in the bobbin in the case while pulling the thread to the left. Make sure the thread goes through that small metal slit because that holds the thread in place. Then close the clear cover. Now manually move the hand wheel towards you to pull the bottom thread from the bobbin upwards. This diagram kind of gives an idea of what's happening as it makes a lock stitch. Pull the thread upwards and then pull both top and bottom threads through the slit on the presser foot. Pull all threads towards the back to keep them away when you're sewing. All right, so these are the must have tools whenever you are sewing. You need pins, thread scissors, and regular fabric scissors, a seam ripper, a seam ruler, or a regular ruler like this, 
a tailoring chalk or something that you can mark the fabric or a pencil. Alright guys, now I will explain the very important things you need to know about fabric. Fabrics have a salvage edge. Uh, this is the yarns that are woven in different patterns to securely finish the edges of the fabric. The selvage edge is parallel to the grain line and this is important to know because many of the times the grain line is what helps you align your patterns. The cross grain line is perpendicular to the lengthwise grain line. It is very rare to align patterns on the cross grain line, usually just consider the grain line. The bias grain line is diagonal to the lengthwise grain line and this line is usually to align patterns that need more drape or more stretch to the complete design. Now we are going to start sewing. So cut two 10 by 10 inch squares and place them together with the right sides of the fabric facing together. We're going to do a half of an inch seam allowance for this little square. Usually people do a half of an inch or three fourths of seam allowance. A lot of sewing machines already have a seam allowance marking on the metal plate. You can either mark it measure it from the needle to the right side, use a post-it note, or tape to remember what measurement you want for the seam allowance. We are going to make a basic straight stitch. So the first thing you want to do is put down the needle manually on the fabric, slowly press on the foot pedal with your foot, and press the back stitch button to make your beginning back stitch. You do a back stitch so the thread doesn't unravel out of the fabric. While sewing lightly, press on the fabric from the left side and center. You just want to guide the fabric to make sure the line is straight. When I am sewing, I consecutively keep my eye on the seam allowance marking and the needle. At the end, again, do a back stitch and cut the thread. Now your basic straight line should be straight. If it's not straight, then practice. And when you flip it over to the right sides, you'll see that it is a nice clean seam. Each time you sew a seam, you have to press it. This really makes a difference to the quality of your product. Now you have a nice clean open seam. Now I will show you how to do a double turn hem. A double turn hem is used basically to finish edges that are exposed. First, we will do a guideline stitch from the selvage. The selvage edge is one inch, so we will have a one inch seam allowance for this time. Remember to back stitch from the beginning and at the end. Do the same thing to the other edge of the selvage, and now we're going to press it down while having the thread inside. Do that to both sides and you'll have something like this. Now we're gonna cut about one fourth or one half of the edge of the selvage. Now we're going to turn it over once and then press on it. You're going to do this to both edges. Now take it to the sewing machine and we are going to sew one fourth from the edge. I use the end of the presser foot as my guide. Remember to do the beginning back stitch and then at the end do another back stitch. Your hem should look like this and then we'll do the same thing to the other side and then we're gonna take it to the press. Okay, so if this was an actual garment or any kind of fabric project, you would need to search the edges or do some other finishings for the raw edges. It's important to do so because it avoids fraying and it gives a cleaner look. In clothing, the finishing edges or seams really demonstrates the quality of the product. But my goal right now is to give you an idea of how to sew fabric. So, to just complete this quick practice, flip the right sides together and then pin each end, and then pin another one in the middle. Do this on both sides. Pick any end to sew first. We will do a half an inch seam allowance. Do a back stitch first and continue sewing. Before getting to the sewing needle, make sure to remove the pin to avoid breaking the needle. And remember to do a back stitch at the end. Cut the threads and do the same to the other side. Once you're done sewing the sides, you will have something like this. Nicely press both seams. Now we can pull the inside out. And now you have an idea of what a couple straight stitches can make. In my first class of clothing construction, I had to make a binder filled with my samples of seams, hems, zipper placements, and pockets. If you're just beginning, consider sewing parallel lines, concentric squares, circles, and make sure to practice backstitching as well. 
Also, try to practice on paper without thread to refine your stitch accuracy. And your goal will be to accurately sew on the line and curves. I hope you find this video helpful, and I'll see you guys next time. Que Dios los bendigan. Bye!